Hello, it's Scott Manley here with an update on the EM drive, the controversial widget where if you resonate uh, microwaves inside a special cavity, you in theory or you supposedly get thrust. The problem with this is it violates all sorts of uh, theories of physics that are actually pretty well established and we wouldn't want to have to throw them out. So yeah, people are interested in this because it would be awesome if it worked. It would be also even more awesome because we'd have to rewrite huge chunks of physics. So yeah, a guy called Martin Timar, who uh, is a propulsion researcher at the Dresden University of Technology, uh, he's actually already, he's worked on previous you know, real propulsion systems that have been proven to work. There's the field emission electric propulsion system called FEEP, which uh, uses liquid metal and achieves ion velocities of about 100 kilometers per second. So he has been working with his students on something called the Space Drive Project. And in the paper, it specifically says that the Space Drive Project aims at developing cutting edge measurements equipment to thoroughly test the latest EM drive and Mach effect thruster models, the two most promising revolutionary thruster concepts that are presently under investigation by various labs. So the Space Drive project has this lab that they've been doing testing in. It has a pretty large vacuum chamber and they've done as much as they can to shield it from outside effects. For example, the devices are uh, sealed inside mu metal shields, which uh, a mu metal is a special to alloy, which is high in nickel and iron. And that essentially is supposed to block out the magnetic field, such as the effects of the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, and to reduce the effects, you know, possible effects, they have like isolated their electronics and their power system. They're using twisted pair cables everywhere. And in fact, actually, they can remotely operate and reconfigure the experiments when they're running. So the drive systems, the devices are mounted on servo motors so they can rotate the, uh, the EM drive from one direction to the other. Uh, and test without uh, having to open up the vacuum chamber and possibly mess around with their torsion balance. So yeah, they put their EM drive that they built inside of this and they fired it up. They fed in about two watts of power and they got an observed oh, deflection corresponding to about two micronewtons of thrust. That gives them an efficiency of something like two millinewtons per kilowatt. Um, that was actually better than the thrust that was observed in the previous experiments. So the next step was to use their motor to flip the, mo the EM drive and point at the opposite direction and then fire the system up again. And what did they see? They saw another thrust, four micronewtons, in the opposite direction. Looking good so far for EM drive fans, right? Then they turned the thruster at 90 degrees to the balance and they turned it on and they got a deflection. They shouldn't have got a deflection. They got another four micronewtons of thrust despite the fact that the EM drive was pointing in completely the wrong direction. And then what they did was they had uh, an attenuator, that is something that would reduce the signal. They would have all their signal generating equipment and then they would have something that would just dump the power instead of putting it into the uh, cavity. And they got thrust. So, yeah, this pretty much says that they were getting thrust regardless of the orientation or configuration of their drive. Even if they weren't putting microwaves in, as long as their circuitry was running to generate the microwaves, they were generating the thrust. So what they think is most likely happening is the magnetic field of the Earth is not zero inside this. They have their shielding, but they can't eliminate it completely. I mean, they didn't have a complete, uh, they didn't have a complete set of shielding. So they estimated that based upon the strength of the Earth's magnetic field, uh, based on their latitude, they, they came up with a, an estimate of the Lorentz force that pretty much matches the thrust that they observed. So they think right now they're just still observing the effects of magnetic fields. They can't conclusively say that they saw any thrust. And in fact, they pr they're pretty sure that all the thrust that was observed from this experiment and probably previous experiments was due to interaction of the electrical systems with the magnetic field. Now, that's not to say that the EM drive has completely been eliminated by this because their design 
uh, what didn't include some dielectric components which have previously been suggested that they are required. However, previous experiments also claim to see thrust even without these uh, dielectrics. But it does seem pretty uh, pretty damning that they couldn't generate any thrust. The, the, the All their thrust was essentially coming from magnetic field effects. So they also tested the Mach effect thruster. They built their own. The Mach effect thruster is essentially uh, a mass which gets oscillated at about kilohertz frequencies. Now, due to some you know, subtle effects in general, general relativity, if your oscillation goes slightly faster in one direction than the other, then apparently you can get net thrust in one direction depending upon how you formulate your equations. Uh, many people obviously aren't convinced by this on account of the fact that it causes problems with Newtonian mechanics, but let's not bother about that right now. They, t they put it in the machine, they tested it, and what did they see? Well, they saw a 0.6 micronewton thrust. Again, they flipped their whole device from outside, you know, using the servo motor, and the thrust observed. Also, when they flipped it at 90 degrees to the uh, direction of their balance, they got no thrust. Looking pretty good for it. Then they uh, decided to open up their uh, vacuum chamber. They took the thruster that they had and then they turned it around on the platform, right? And then sealed the device back up. So the platform or the device was uh, configured in its original orientation, but the drive was now pointing the other way. They turned it on and they got thrust in the original direction. So despite turning the drive around manually, they were still getting thrust in the same direction as before. Again, implying that what was really causing the thrust was perhaps related to the systems driving it, to the electrical power systems. And yeah, look, this is a great piece of work because it is exploring the, the limits of these systems at very high accuracy. Many of the criticisms that have been leveled against previous tests have been addressed and they, they're not giving up on this. They are going to continue to look a little far, further into it. You know, they're going to test their dielectrics. They're going to see if they can run their Mach effect thruster at higher powers because you know, they were very, very close to the level of uh, noise in their system. But regardless, yeah, I don't see this happening, but I'm really glad that people are doing this kind of good research. And we'll find out the truth sooner or later. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.